Welcome to Jobbed Out, the wrestling editorial that reminds you that in the Royal Rumble, 30 men enter, but only like three ever actually have a chance of winning. With the Royal Rumble coming up, I have been ripping my hair out trying to figure out what to talk about. My favorite Rumble, my favorite match, a 26th video about Chris Benoit. The big channels are all ranking their favorite full pay-per-views, and I'm here trying to eliminate the bad options. And that's when it hit me. Elimination. Yeah, that's the answer. Any diehard wrestling fan has had a favorite elimination. And everyone has had that moment. The worst feeling. Seeing your guy tossed when you thought he was going to go all the way this year. The basic rule when it comes to the Royal Rumble is this. In order to be eliminated, you must be thrown over the top rope and both feet must touch the floor. And I promise you, at some point, a wrestling fan is practically guaranteed to be pissed off when their guy is eliminated in some sucky other way. Like the rules were all thrown out the window. So today, I present for you, Freaks 5 Sucky Other Ways to Lose a Royal Rumble Match. Number 5. Being replaced while you make your entrance. It feels like this happens once every year or two, doesn't it? Ty Dillinger, Curtis Axel, Spike Dudley, don't forget Test, attacked as they're supposed to make their entrance and never officially entered in the Rumble. It's got to be one of the most heartbreaking ways to learn that you're not going to main event mania. It's an even bigger stinger because the person who attacked you just takes your spot. Hell, we saw Becky Lynch do it. Even though, you know, she didn't attack Lana, she just walked out there, took the spot, and won the whole damn thing, leaving the ravishing Russian to wonder, what if? Five, four, three, two, one, Number four, the no-show. What's worse than not making it down the ramp and into the ring? Not making it into the building. The buzzer sounds and nothing. No one comes down. Two minutes later, the next person's on their way and the show just goes on. This happened in 91 when Macho King Randy Savage, who had earlier cost the Ultimate Warrior the WWF title, just fled the scene. No replacement made, just moved on. But I guess it's fine. We all knew Savage was going to have his WrestleMania match set in stone anyway. It has happened since. Bastion Booger actually shot vignettes in the back about drawing his number. And when his time came, nothing! Eventually, Bret Hart would slide in, but Bret was already going to be in the match. He didn't replace Booger, Booger just never showed up. Number 3. Eliminating Yourself Macho Man, you almost did it again! The WWE had to be really creative when Randy Savage accidentally eliminated himself because he was invested in the Jake Roberts feud. That year, they decided, you have to be thrown over by somebody else or it doesn't count. So, they allowed him back in. They scrapped that in later years. Most famously, Mil Mascaras, who was notorious for thinking he was bigger than he actually was, did the exact same thing, most likely so that he could say nobody else eliminated him. Then of course... Core champion! Yeah, another Drew Carey! Yeah! He's, Drew Carey's getting the hell out of there! He's smarter than I thought! He's in the Hall of Fame. Five, four, three, two, one, Number two. Entering before your number. Now this has happened exactly once, but there is precedent that leads people to believe it's one of those unwritten rules in wrestling, kind of like burning your tag. In 2008, Fit Finley entered the ring before his time to save his little bastard. Now there was some miscommunication about whether it was using a weapon that got him DQ'd from a no DQ match, but we all know that's not the case. There's actually a second instance that backs this idea up. Back in 2001, Al Snow, who was feuding with the hardcore champion Raven at the time, went after the champ, rolled him into the ring, and was held outside by the refs. Why? It wasn't over weapons, we've seen plenty of those in a rumble. So why they held him back became clear pretty quick. The refs made Al Snow wait until it was Al Snow's turn. 
Now before I reveal number one, I have to give credit to Redditor the Long Wolf 527 for not only sparking this conversation, but offering stats on how often each type of elimination happens. Great stuff. His list differs from mine, and he even proposed a method that's not on my list. Limb loss. Yeah, grievous bodily harm. Thank you, Chainsaw Charlie and Jerry Lawler. There's only one way to be eliminated, it's to be thrown over the top rope, and both feet have to hit the floor, or to have one of your major limbs lopped off by a chainsaw. Another honorable mention goes out to Alex Riley, who accidentally fell out of the ring once. God, that's gotta suck. So, what is the most sucky other way to be eliminated in the Royal Rumble? Number one, being eliminated by somebody not in the Rumble. Yeah, you all knew this was going to be here. It's the most frustrating of them all. Someone who's already been eliminated's got sour grapes and they take it out on your guy. Thank you, Hulk Hogan. Granted, Vader did this once too and ended up throwing everybody out, including the guy who was supposed to win it. Uh, whoops. So they said screw it and put everybody back in again. There's also the time Kane took out CM Punk after being eliminated, but it's actually a pretty safe bet you know the story behind that one. And there you have it! Five sucky other ways to get eliminated from the Royal Rumble. So, tell me, what is the most frustrating, annoying, sucky elimination that you remember in your memories of the Rumble? Let me know in the comments. For now though, I better get my shoulders off the mat. So thank you for tuning in to Jobbed Out. Catch you next time.